I'm Chris McDonough, a retired homicide detective. I've interviewed thousands of people, from serial killers to ministers. Welcome to the interview room. Aloha, everybody, and good evening. Welcome to the interview room. Um, We are grateful that each and every one of you are here tonight. Um, I hope you can hear me well. Um, I have to laugh. uh, Last night when um, I had an opportunity to be with uh, Vanessa and Teresa on Unmasked, Uh, I don't know if you guys heard it, uh, but Buddy was in the background. We bought him one of these new, um, you know, indestructible type of toys and any of you that uh, have a jack russell know that uh, those buggers can tear anything up and they're hysterical so when you get a chance and you get back over to her channel and listen to that uh, you'll hear buddy in the background and he's absolutely um, tearing that thing apart so hopefully if you hear it again tonight you'll know what it is uh, and it will be the budster Uh, a shout out to everybody from uh, North America, uh, as well as our European friends. Uh, again, we apologize for the late hour, but we appreciate uh, your dedication uh, to listen in. And if you um, have to go to sleep, please, you know, that's first priority. Make sure you, you, you get taken care of. Uh, take care of your health first. Uh, you know, YouTube's not going anywhere. Um, I want to give a shout out also to our members. Uh, and our subs. Uh, We can't do this without you. We are uh, grateful uh, for your trust, for your understanding, and your patience uh, as we plow through some of these um, cases through, you know, from the side, uh, looking in through another set of lenses. Uh, Also, uh, what can I say about our mods? If you're new to our channel and have not subscribed, please, you know, hit that subscribe button and, and also set that bell so you get these notifications. But in my opinion, uh, we have the best uh, mods uh, going in. And uh, that was, that's Miss Sophia. She's uh, kind of our, our team leader. And then Maui girl, Mimi J2, and Miss JT, uh, and Four Sons Mom. We are e- eternally grateful to each and every one of you women uh, for not only your courage, uh, but your intellect in relationship to how all of this comes together. Uh, in all sincerity, Karen, Dylan, and I are, are grateful uh, to each of you. And then, of course, all of our subs and our, our members, uh, thank you. Uh, if you're not a member of this channel, do not worry about that. Uh, just sub to the channel. That's all we ask. Okay? Uh, and we're grateful that each and every one of you are here. Well, uh, this tonight, you know, a couple of uh, house cleaning items, you know, uh, let's keep this classy. Uh, you know, folks can be, uh, you know, pretty emotional in relationship to what's taken place over the last week. And, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, what's that old saying? Remember that picture of uh, Abraham Lincoln and where it says, don't believe everything you hear on the Internet. Hey, okay. uh, boy, wasn't this uh, last couple of days uh, one of those curveballs, right? Um <laughs> Man, you couldn't have scripted that any better. Uh, and, you know, it kind of fell into place. Uh, and if, you'll, if you are uh, on our channel, you saw that I put a community post up after talking to Mary uh, and that crazy call uh, and basically said, you know, it's going to be an interesting week for summer. Uh, because, you know, while everybody's out there saying, you know, certain things about certain channels. Well, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I, I just, I, I don't have time for it. Uh, I don't have time for, 
you know, trolls or people that are, you know, asking me for rocks and rainbows. Okay. You know, uh, here's a, here's a hint. Okay. Uh, those of you that, that need to know. Okay. Um, I've been doing this before you were born and you know, I'm not passing out any rocks. I'm not passing out any rainbows. In fact, uh, you might as well put it out there tomorrow because, um, uh, no big deal. Okay. Uh, however, I will tell you one thing. Okay. Um, I actually have an attorney and his name is Billy and he's probably in the chat. So if you come in here and start grinding, you know, in my channel, uh, please feel free to do so. Okay. All right. Ed, let's talk about summer. Wow. After that call, holy cow. Um, I couldn't believe it. I don't know about you. Okay. But I just could not believe it. Okay. And as a result of that, you know, it really did show a side of what we've been talking about here. Coop, uh, Dean, myself at the Cold Case Foundation, uh, just the other day started talking about, you know, some of the moving parts here. <clears throat> and if you have not had an opportunity to see those guys, those guys are in some of our uh, videos that uh, we've put up on the platform here. Uh, Greg uh, Cooper used to run uh, the Behavior Science Unit for the FBI. Um, and of course, uh, I'm the National Law Enforcement Relationship Director uh, for the Cold Case Foundation. So uh, we work with law enforcement on a daily basis, uh, helping them um, solve uh, cold homicides. Okay? So you can imagine, you know, what we see as a group uh, come through. And right now, we have about 102 active cases with 102 different agencies uh, around the world. <clears throat> and some of them uh, in Texas, some of them Colorado, some California, uh, they're literally all around the world. And I have, a, I have two cases in Texas right now, uh, and I have another case in Alaska uh, that I'm helping out on. <clears throat> that said, those details, obviously, you know, we can't uh, go into right now because those agencies are pressing forward on some things. However, some of the other things that we have helped out with is let's, uh, I want to bring you up to speed on Maya Miliete before we get it into the phone call tonight. Uh, Maya's case is going full steam ahead. Uh, we need to keep that family, uh, Mary Chris and Richard in our prayers and all of the community supporters uh, in San Diego County. Uh, they have been doing an amazing job, still searching for Maya, um, and the investigation is still moving forward, and it's kind of in a rapid pace potentially. So uh, let's, you know, I, I will give you more details as uh, we get down the road here, uh, a little bit, you know, short, shorter, and, um, you know, hopefully we'll get some uh, movement there at some point, okay? But that case will not go cold, I can assure you that. Just like we said uh, that uh, Barry Morphew's case and Suzanne's case would not go cold. So the next one I want to talk about is a case that I got introduced to uh, over a year ago uh, on uh, Mike's channel, uh, Profiling Evil, and that is Brian McKenzie and his mom, Frances. Um, and I have some video that we shot about eight months ago uh, that we're probably going to we'll put together and put it up. But... Just to let you know, uh, one of the strategies there from us as the Cold Case Foundation was to focus on the car. And I told um, Francis, his mom, uh, who, by the way, is suffering deeply because of you know what, what was just discovered last Sunday, and that was Brian's car. Uh, it was found in a pond uh, in an HOA area uh, or an HOA uh, complex and uh, it was submerged about three to four feet. Um, so <clears throat> Francis called me uh, within uh, 15, 20 minutes of them finding, of her being notified that they found the car. So uh, she is suffering deeply right now. Uh, Karen, Dylan, and I want you to know, uh, or we extended your love to her uh, when we talked to her, and we also want you to know that she extends her love uh, to you based on what she uh, has told me I could share. Okay. Uh, she is a strong woman. Man, for two years, this woman uh, has been uh, looking 
for her sweet son, uh, Brian. Um, so there were some uh, remains found in the car. Uh, the medical examiner has not uh, identified them yet. So let's keep those, uh, uh, let's keep that in, in our prayers there for her. The next case uh, update uh, I will give you is Kelly uh, Brennan down in Florida. As many of you know, I talked to uh, her boyfriend, uh, Eddie, at length uh, on numerous occasions. And in fact, even Mike and I talked to him uh, a while ago when over at, you know, when we were uh, together at Profiling Evil. And, you know, as a result of that, uh, we have been learning a lot about his movement as well as others around him. Uh, and so let's keep her uh, in our prayers as soon as uh, this situation um, is uh, resolved with um, Sweet Summer here, uh, then I'm going to have um, a lot of uh, attention uh, to Kelly. Okay? And so that said, and then there's a couple other things we're working behind the scenes uh, that uh, we'll release shortly uh, to bring you guys up to speed. And as we continue to do this uh, collectively as a true crime community and supporting each other, uh, not, you know, what's the old saying when, it, when a new, you know, circus comes into town, you know, those are somebody else's, you know, clowns, right? You know, I don't do drama. I don't do, you know, threats. I don't do any of that stuff, Okay. Um, I, I, I'm just, I don't have time for it. Okay. Uh, we are working on a study, uh, the cold case foundation on studying, uh, a new, well, it's actually going to be an updated study, uh, in relationship to sexual deviant behavior and serial killers. Uh, Coop has asked that I be on that committee, uh, and hopefully, uh, we'll know soon that we got some grant money. And what that will mean is it'll be led by, uh, Dr. Larry Simons, uh, who's a forensic psychologist, and essentially uh, uh, folks will be getting into the prisons around the United States uh, to interview uh, serial killers uh, on some other stuff. So uh, my expertise, as you probably already know, you know, I don't, you know, go around saying, look at me, even though I get accused of it. <laughs> okay. But my, my deal is kids. Okay. Uh, those who select children as a victimology uh, for sexual or SA gratification uh, during the commission of homicide. Uh, so essentially they choose children to murder them uh, for gratification. Um, and I coined uh, in 1995 the advent of the white collar predator, uh, which uh, was came full circle when uh, Chris Hansen in 1998 on Dateline NBC started uh, showing up at houses where these uh, intellectuals started showing up as well. And uh, that uh, study uh, really took off and, you know, put those guys into a different place. Um, also, uh, tonight, what we're going to play here has uh, some, I'm going to give you a warning, a trigger warning, uh, for those of our uh, members and our guests, um, where I want to be very sensitive and considerate of your feelings and your emotions uh, for some of our survivors of SA. Uh, what you're going to hear tonight is a conversation uh, between uh, Don and Mary about Jeannie. Okay. And I know that they are listening. Uh, and I have their permission uh, to uh, play what I'm going to play here this evening. And I'm also going to give you some thoughts about this in relationship to how does this fit in with Summer Wells' disappearance, right? Everybody asks, how does this connect? How do we connect? Okay. Well, in order to understand why folks make those prank phone calls and put them out, okay, then you have to do uh, basically um, using questions as surgical tools to and to get answers. Okay? That's what an investigator does. They uh, the questions are the surgical tools for an investigator. Okay? So you have to frame your questions carefully, uh, and you have to understand the potential type of response you will get from one of the three personas of our life. Okay? The first one is our public 
The second is our private, and the third is our secret life. All sin, all crime occurs in the secret life. If you have not had a chance to go over to the Cold Case Foundation live, get over there. It's two bucks or whatever it is. It supports the foundation and and the amazing work that they do. But you also get to hear some very fascinating uh, podcasts about those three principles of, of lives that I just explained to you here uh, a second ago, right, that we just learned about. And the, you'll meet James. Uh, James is our director of intelligence. He's over in the UK, uh, used to work with Scotland Yard, uh, and you can imagine the resources uh, that we have uh, just having him on board. <clears throat> so where I want to talk tonight is why it is so important to see the correlation between past behavior, behavior, present, and future behavior. Okay. If Summer is five years old and she just vanishes from that property, okay, well, I think we all can agree there are so many probabilities that could come into play in relationship to that. You know, accidents, intentional, abductions, uh, and, you know, we could go down a whole list of probabilities, okay? But are they practical, okay? These, these you know, theories. Okay? So the only way you can do that is you have to, through a process of elimination, understand what is called the 10 filters of profiling. Okay? And filter number one is the victimology. And then... The second, one of the second pieces is you have to now look at, you know, the contact site uh, where the, you know, the suspectology, who is, who's in the circle based on, remember, we talked about the victim continuum. It looks like an L, okay? Environment, situation, circumstance, low, medium, high risk victim, okay? And so this is by all accounts, Initially, when we look at it, and all of us in this community, we look at this, we go, okay, is this a low-risk victim? And the answer, if it's at her house and she's going downstairs as reported, that is a very low-risk situation. Now, and I'm not talking about, you know, the environment. I'm talking about, you know, the situation, okay, and the circumstance. Okay? Mom, she's downstairs you know, playing with her toys. Okay. So in order to understand what that really means, if that is the truth, okay, then you have to study everybody in that circle. Okay? And this is why the behavior science unit exists okay? uh, in Quantico. Okay? This is why John Douglas wrote the book Mindhunter. Okay? And this is why... All of these guys, even today, Mary Ellen O'Toole and, and Ann Burgess, and, and there's so many others uh, who, you know, studied the mind of criminal behavior. Okay. Well, they have the, op the, the luxury uh, of going to prisons and sitting down with these guys and having a cup of coffee and a donut with them. Okay. Uh, and by the way, McDonuts is, a, is an old term. <laughs> okay, I've I heard it. I've heard it a million times, and quite frankly, I love it. I, I think it's hysterical. Okay? They used to call me McDonuts. Uh, that said, in order to understand then what exactly is going on okay, with the victim, you then have to basically step back and try to see through the eyes of the hunter. Okay? Meaning, try to see through the eyes of Barry Morphew. Okay. And you, I thought it was fascinating, uh, you know, now that we're hearing some of the stuff coming out, but look at the correlating behaviors between a hunter and how he potentially was chasing his wife with a dart, okay, a tranquilizer dart okay, that he uses okay, to tranquilize animals. Okay. Well, now you see that hunting aspect of his personality now has a crossover into his suspectology and how he attacked his wife, okay? 
So that's why it's important to understand the science in relationship to how they connect together. Okay. And so this is why Don Wells is so important to understand his background, okay? to understand what makes Don tick okay? and what makes Don ticked off. Okay? There are two sides of that, right? One is how, he, how does he do things? Okay? And the second is what does he do when he loses control? And I think tonight's call is going to show you, okay, how over the last couple of weeks, you're, you've seen behavior start to, to go like this, okay? And last night, uh, I think, was just the cherry on, on the top of the ice cream, okay? Because he's got people around him, potentially, or it's him. I don't know who did it, okay? I heard that there were there were some PI, you know, that they connected up with, and it may have been him. But for all I know, it's you know one of the other folks that he's been hanging around with. I don't know. Quite frankly, it doesn't matter. Okay? What matters is okay, how it was released into the environment, and who was the target that it was released to, and that happens to be Mary, a victim of Don's okay, when she was 13, maybe, you know, and two other friends of his, where they tried to basically tear her clothing off and rape her. Okay. In California, that would have been categorized as a 664-261. Uh, that's, those are the penal code sections. Okay. And that's, that's an attempted rape. Okay, or sexual assault with great bodily injury. Uh, and what she had to do was jump up and then hide in her parents' room and lock the door. Okay. And now, and then we have Jeannie, okay, sweet Jeannie. This woman for 37 years held the pain of, of horrendous abuse at the hands of this guy okay, from the age of five to the age of 12, okay? and he was 12 to the age of 19. Okay? This call tonight that you're going to hear, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prep you. Again, our friends who are survivors, please do me a promise me. Sit down, okay, and I want you to take a deep breath tonight, okay? There's going to be vulgarity in this call, okay, which on this channel I don't, you know, condone nor endorse, but this is how this individual spoke in this call, okay. There's going to be accusations of challenging and uh, victim blaming in this call, okay. So I want you to know that I stand 100% strong with Jeannie and Mary and Trish. And by the way, there are other women that have come forward as a result of Jeannie, a total of six at this point. Um, and they have said after watching Jeannie, okay, she inspired them and gave them strength. Okay. I hope tonight that you survivors get strength from this call as horrendous as it is, okay? but empower yourself. Do not let this person win. Okay? This is important for Summer because Jeannie was five when this started. Summer was five when she disappeared. What's the cross correlation to that? Okay. If there ends up being evidence of, let's say, a sale or a trade or a traffic situation, okay, Jeannie becomes so relevant. If it wasn't 
for Jeannie and Tricia and Mary, we would not have known about Don's secret life. We would have seen this guy quoting scripture. Hey, notice he's not quoting very much scripture anymore. Hey, we would have seen him, you know, just every time you talk to him, okay, it's a scripture. Okay. Well, here's a conversation without any scriptures. I'm going to play the whole call. It's about 30 minutes long, and then we'll come back together and we'll discuss it. Let's go. Hey, Donnie. Oh, hey, what are you doing? Oh, not a lot. What are you doing? Oh, I just, I don't know, I'm just sick. I, I got your message. Well, that one isn't mine. I just copied it and sent it to you. I'm getting all kind of crazy at you. That's just, I don't know. Oh. I didn't write that. No, I didn't write that. Oh, okay. I just, just sent it to you because it's just... I don't know. I'm just getting all kind of stuff like that and other stuff and just whatever. It's, yeah. Who you getting it from? You don't know who it's from or? No. Huh. 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 I don't know. Did, 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 did you uh, see Chris's interview last night? Yeah, pretty stupid. What a retard. <laughs> He's a retard. Really? Uh, uh, yeah, he lost half. He lost over half his viewers. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Yeah, he's, he's a real dumbass. Right. How do you work? No, I mm -hmm. had to go home. Oh, I see. I was at work. Uh -huh. I just got home. Oh, I see. Huh. Well, um, I just wanted to let you know that I talked to Jeannie last night, and yeah. she told me that she was going to press charges against you, Donnie. So, sure. Yeah, so I wanted to let you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh -huh. um, that, that friend of hers, I guess she's going to be with her. She's pressing charges, uh -huh. too. Oh, uh, that's crazy. Yeah. So are, they are, they gonna, are they gonna are they gonna are they pressing shoot charges in juvenile court? How's um, that gonna work? No. Well, because at the time that she's saying that it ended was she was twelve and you were like nineteen, so Oh um, hell no. Yeah and that ain't true. That's 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 not true at all. You said I remember when we was I was like I was like 14, 15 when I had that motorcycle. That's the only thing yeah. I remember at all. That's well, crazy, so. Well, she, ain't no way. Yeah, she, well, she said it started when she was five, Donnie, so that would have had to make yeah. you 11, and she said it ended when she was 12, so that yeah. would have made you 19. Yeah, because you're seven years old. Yeah, because you're seven years old. I, I don't know where they're getting all this stuff, but. There ain't no way. Huh. There ain't no way. Well, I just want I just want you to know that she is pressing charges, so I don't know if they're gonna uh, extradite her go back to Utah or what? Huh? So what am I gonna do? So what are they gonna do with my kids? Is Jeannie gonna take care of my kids? Well, she said I'm... on that one interview, she said on that one interview that 
she tried to adopt my kids and everything else and take care of them. I think she's going to come down here and get these kids too and take care of them. I, I don't know, Bonnie. I don't well, know. Nobody gives a fuck about my kids, huh? Mm -hmm. I don't they think find Summer. Well, I'd like to know what Summer thinks all this. <laughs> How hateful motherfuckers are 40 years later. Don't bring up some bullshit like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know, Donnie. She just told me that when, you know, when we heard that Summer went missing, that everything came back to her because she was five years old at the time it started. And Summer is five years old, so she just... Yeah, she ain't maybe. taking no blame on her part, though, but she yeah, did. Yeah, but Donnie, she was five. How could she take the blame? I mean, a five-year-old... Oh, of course not. She ain't going to know shit. She, don't, she ain't going to take no blame to nothing. Well, I don't I mean, know. she's come to... She come, hell, she tried to sleep with Dad. I mean, you know, hell fire. I don't know. Oh, I don't she slept think with everybody. I'm not, no, she I slept don't. with Rick. She slept with Sherry's husband. She slept with all kinds of people. I don't know. I don't think she slept with Rick. Uh, I didn't hear about you know, that. Oh, yeah, she did. Well, I did. Really? She wow. slept with all kinds of people. Oh, I don't know about that, Donnie. I wasn't there. I just, I just, like I said, you know, I just wanted to let you know. You know? Mary, got some. <laughs> Sorry, I I just no. wanted to let you know that. Oh, it's okay. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm just giving you a heads up. You know, she can try. I mean, when are they going to go down and push charges? Uh, when are they going to do it? I mean, today, today. Oh, today. Oh, yep. Okay. Yep. So I just want oh. to let you know they're going to be coming after you, Donnie, and they're going to put yeah. you in jail and probably extradite you back here to Utah. So I'm just giving you a heads up. It. Okay. I really doubt it. I really doubt it. Yeah. Huh. I really doubt it. I mean, <sighs> it's so long ago. How can mm -hmm. they, I don't see. And I never, yeah. you know, it was, I mean, I was freaking like 14, 15 years old. So I, I, I she ought to go to the juvenile court. I don't know. Let's see if she can push I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it'll go through juvenile. Now that you're old, you guys are older, you know. Yeah, but I was a kid. Yeah. I was a fucking kid. I'm, I'm I mean, not a but what I'm saying is, when, a, when she's, she's just an evil bitch, Mary, she's just an evil bitch. She's trying to say I've done that shit to my kids, man. That's fucking ridiculous, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah. her and the horse she rode in on. I don't, know if, evil bitch. I don't know if she said anything about your kids. I know Trish did. No, was... she's saying I've done that shit to my kids. She's the evil bitch with the evil thoughts. Huh. Yeah, well, I don't know, Donnie. Just because we played a little game when I was a fucking, when we were both little kids, she's going to act all like this. She wants to be an evil bitch. Well, fuck her. <laughs> yeah, I know. She's an I evil know fucking you're, bitch. I know you're upset, Donnie. I know. Well, yeah, I'm upset. She's going to wait 40 fucking years. What the yeah. fuck's wrong with her fucking in the head, man? Right. She just... But it's because we played... A, she, man, she played along with me, Meyer. She played the little game. Yeah. She's she's no she's not innocent. She tried I, to fuck my I dad. Just, well, no, I just I can't see. I don't know. I just I I just she says it's I know we can see nothing, time, man. We can see nothing. See if she give a fuck, if she fucking give a fuck about my kids like she claims to, she'd stop this fucking evil ass bullshit. Yeah. She don't care about nobody but her fucking self. No. And she wants to be on her little show and play her little fucking game like she's a victim and she she ain't no victim. Yeah. She ain't no victim at all. She used to ride on the motorcycle with me and everything else. And now she don't even want to talk about any of that. Well, she has talked to me about that. She just said that, you know, when yeah, you Yeah, of course. She's innocent, said, right? Well, innocent. no, she didn't say she was innocent. She just said that. She ought to tell the whole story what mm -hmm. she ought to do instead of lying. And she, I mean, what about what happened to the lie detector test and all that? Well, oh, she, that's all gone well, away. No, no, she's still waiting. And whoever her me. friend is, and whoever her friend is, yeah, is supposedly this other friend or yeah. whatever. Yeah, she ought to take a lot of take her test too. Yeah. Well, Jeannie said she's willing to pay for one. She was just waiting for you to come out and say, "Okay, yeah, I'll take one if you're going to pay for yeah, it." Yeah, I'll, I'll take one. I'll take one, no problem. And I'll yeah. tell the truth. Okay. She can't tell the truth. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, like I said, Bonnie, I don't know what happened. I wasn't there, you know? So I think it's pretty fucking evil going to wait for somebody 40 years just for when they was playing house or whatever, and she didn't have no problem playing house. Hmm. You know, now all of a sudden, 40 years later, she's going to say, I did all kind of stuff to my kids and Donnie and Margie and everybody else. What the hell is wrong with that? Yeah. What's wrong with everybody? I don't, I don't understand that. Like, well, like she's I been said, spreading them lies. She's been spreading them lies about me my whole life. Yeah. She's made everybody in my family hate me my whole life. She turned everybody against me my whole life. Well, it's too bad you can't get Margie and Donnie to go on an interview with you. Because if they could, oh, I could. They, 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 just are just, they don't want to be superstars like fucking genie does well, no, I'm, not trying to stay out of this I'm just saying if if they were to come and in their own voice you know say my dad didn't they, touch me and genie's lying they could do that they I could do that yeah they're willing to do that they just don't want to be in the spotlight in the middle of a bunch of big ass shit show but apparently genie loves shit shows because she's right in the middle of one she mm-hmm. stole the spotlight off my daughter what matters Okay, and now it's all about Jeannie, Jeannie, Jeannie. Nobody's even looking for my daughter anymore. They don't even care anymore. Nobody gives a fuck anymore. Well, what about you? Nobody's even searching. Nobody's even fucking searching for my daughter anymore. I have to go out and look for her. Because nobody else gives a fuck no more. I mean, you guys are, you know, looking for her, right? You're still... Yeah, I'm trying to, but now it's like I'm up to my charges, too. What are my boys going to do? Just stay in foster care for the rest of their life now? Thanks a lot. I don't know, Donnie. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. You know, well, I don't, she don't care. Idea. I just, I, I just wish. That's she don't give a fuck. I just wish that they could. So now I got four kids that's going to be in foster care. That's if we can find Summer. Yeah. But in her evil little mind, apparently I've done something to my own daughter and everybody else in the damn world. Mm-hmm. What the hell, man? Yeah. And we were kids, man. Kids do stuff like that. What's wrong with her? I don't know, Donnie. She's trying to make it like I'm some kind of evil person that does this to everybody I know and stuff like that. That's bullshit. Well, how? Well, let me ask you a question. How long? How long did you guys mess around together? The only when we had that motorcycle. The only thing I remember about she was really we played house, Mary. Yeah. She stuck her hand down my pants first. Right. Hmm. First time. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. That's the truth. That's the truth. I swear on a stack of Bibles to that. She's the one that initiated the whole thing. Right. It was her. Yeah, I don't. I I I wish I was there, Donnie. And where she <laughs> learned it from, or whatever, I don't know. But I even remember the exact words. Well, I've seen my brother's winky. Can I see yours? And that was her exact words. Huh. And she's the one who initiated it. Huh. Where she learned it from, I don't know. Yeah. And I thought it was odd at the time, but I was still, I was a little kid too, man. Yeah. She ain't the only innocent one in this game. I was innocent too. Right. Nobody taught me any better. Nobody taught me nothing. Yeah. Except for, you know, when we had mom and dad's freaking magazines laying around and stuff like that or whatever. Yeah. 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 It's just crazy, crazy, crazy. I just... Yeah, I mean, she ain't trying to make it any easier. She's just making it worse. It's all about her. Yeah, I just wish they could all find Summer. all about her. her. I just wish that they could find Summer, Donnie. I just, you know... Yeah, well, what good... I mean, yeah, I wish so too, man, because this turned my whole world upside down and nobody cares. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares about my daughter that's out there probably being really raped, mm-hmm. unlike Jeannie. Yeah. She was never hurt in any way. We played a little bit of house touchy feely shit. That's all it ever fucking was. Fuck that bitch. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Donnie. I wasn't there, so. You know what? If anybody was evil in this whole thing, it's her. Yeah. She's the one. Right. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to call you and give you a little bit of info on. 
Yeah. No, my wife says, tell her good fucking luck. Yeah. All right. You know, she wants to be so evil and shit, man. Fine. Yeah. Let her be, man. You know, yeah. that's fine with me, whatever. Yeah. And I was just a kid, too. And she can't see that or whatever. She wants to paint me out to be this evil monster and all this stuff. She's the one that initiated it. Well, I she think did. She I think she just wants. Man, wants I try to, to apologize to her. Mm-hmm. I'm done with all that. She's mm-hmm. trying to act like she's all hurt, blah, blah, blah. Man, she was never hurt in any way. She initiated this shit. Like I said, where she learned it from, I don't know. I have no idea. Right. And I think when we moved to Roy, I think she was seven. It wasn't five or whatever. It don't even fucking matter. Yeah, well, it was 77, so I don't know. It was like June of 77. So then I was 12. Right, but then how old was she? I don't know. How old is she? Well, How old is she now? Let's see. She, um, trying to think. 71. 71 to 77. So, 74, 75, 76, 77. So, that's seven years. That would have made her seven years old at the time when we first moved into that house. No, she's trying to make it sound like we a whole lot more difference and everything else. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. I already got people that's already found all kind of stuff on her anyway. They're just waiting to see the outcome. Oh, right. Um, you oh. know, that's going to be all over YouTube. Huh. Okay. Well, well, mm. well, yeah. Well, I just wanted to call you and let you know what was going on, you know, give you a heads up to- I mean, what do you think people's going to say that when she actually gets me locked up for something 40 years old over playing house? What do you think people's really going to think I, about her I then? Don't, I don't know, Donnie. I, I don't know. I do. I already know. Because that message I sent you, I'm getting all kinds of them from women <laughs> that actually support me because we were playing a little house or whatever when we were kids. Yeah. And they think she's full of shit, man. She should be worried about, actually worried about Summer of trying to paint me as some kind of a monster that I'm not. I love my kids. Yeah. I love everybody. Right. Just because I made a mistake when I was a kid, you know, a little mistake yeah. or whatever, you know, you now she's trying to paint me into this freaking horrific monster and just, oh, poor me, poor me. Shit. If anything, it's poor me. She initiated this. She started this shit. She st- she done this to me. And don't think I did never fucking wake up in my bed or in my bed trying to get down my pants before. Don't think that hasn't ever happened. Yeah, I I don't know, Donnie. I wasn't there. I do know, but right. I do know, and yeah. I'll testify to that. Right. Yeah. No, she's just trying to turn it all around on me. Well, hey, man. She done the same bullshit. She's not innocent. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know where she learned that shit from. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't she's know. She's gonna try to blame me and everything else. Which yeah. She's the she's the evil one trying to paint me as a monster and doing this to my kids and all kind of crazy stuff, man. If anybody's yeah. a monster, it's her. Well, I just really think she just she just really thinks that you know that he did something with Summer and she just wants to find her. Really? You know? Yeah. Well, why didn't she ever fucking call me and talk to me and ask me like a fucking real person would? Well, you know, just because all this, just because all this bullshit on YouTube and all these people saying all this kind of crazy shit, don't mean you just believe it. Well, right, right. Well, that's that's just it, Donnie. You know, a lot of people out there do. Oh, she fucked up the she fucked up the whole investigation. Instead of going out there and looking down the road and everything else, they was looking at us. Well, she's not here. Yeah. Somebody abducted her. They didn't even think about that theory because of her dumb shit. Oh, is that why? Yeah. Yeah. They, they don't think she could have, other than just... Well, they do now, 
Right. They do now. Now they know she was abducted, but now it's too late. She's already gone. So they, I've been trying to tell that from the beginning, but because of her stupid phone call and her fucking whatever the fuck she's thinking bullshit. Uh, man, all yeah. she was trying to do is protect Trish, because Trish is the one to come up with it. Because she started all these lies years ago about me uh, molesting her, Trish and Amanda. That's what first come out. Yeah. That's what first come out was Trish's big fucking mouth. Uh, so she's yeah. just trying to protect Trish. Uh-huh. And really what it's all about is dad told me he'd let me have that house and everything like that. And that's really what it's about is she's fucking jealous and hateful and mean and evil and everything else. Yeah, well, she don't want me nowhere near so, down in power. So, she never has. So did dad tell you he was going to give you the house when you were down here? No, after Summer got gone, he said, because he knew I always wanted to come back to Utah. But I never, ever want to see Utah again. I never want to see any any of my step family ever again. Well, maybe Randy. Yeah. I know he's he's the only one that's got a heart and a whole down place yeah. that I know of. Yeah. And maybe you. I don't know. That's yeah. if you're not reporting me and trying to set me up or whatever. Yeah. I don't know what the hell you what you're doing. No, I wouldn't do that, Donnie. That's just stupid. Well, don't you think what Gene's doing is really freaking retarded and stupid? I'm missing my daughter, whom I love with all my fucking heart. Yeah. And she's just fucking took the spotlight off of her and put it on her little ass like she's somebody. And, oh, I got hurt, blah, blah, blah. Man, she never got hurt. Yeah. And I will tell the courts she initiated the whole thing. I don't know what she learned it from. Like I said, I have no idea. Uh-huh. But if she was truthful and she was a woman whatsoever, she would remember that and she would say so. But she don't. She don't take no blame for nothing. Dylan, let's pause it yeah, for a second. Like I said, I don't know. I wasn't. Okay, I... I know this is really, really, really hard uh, to listen to. So I I just want to take a break here for a second for um, all of you friends and survivors out there that are having uh, to listen to this guy. So I'm going to just pause for a second, kind of regroup, and um, just kind of give me a thumbs up when you guys are uh, feeling okay. I want to be sensitive to your feelings out there. And I know that Jeannie's listening and I know that, um, uh, Mary's listening. Uh, but there are other friends out there that, um, I want to be careful to make sure, uh, we've only got 10 minutes left, uh, on this call, but I think where we're at right now, we, I'm going to, I just want to take a deep breath for you, uh, and just kind of give you guys uh, a chance to regroup for a second. Okay. So this is classic while you guys are, are well, we're kind of slowing down here for a minute, right? This is, this is narcissistic uh, personality trait with deflection. Uh, there's a lot of victim blaming going on here. There's no self-accountability. Uh, you can hear it uh, of what, you know, what he's got going on here, okay? Uh, there is obviously, you know, no religious movement going on here. Um, so that's a facade in the secret life that's been exposed as a result of this. Um, he's not been able to calculate that he's got a seven-year age gap and that, uh, you know, Jeannie reported she was five when this all started, to the police, by the way, um, and and he was uh, 12, and then it ended when she was 12 and he was 19. And the motorcycle uh, ride uh, were because she would, when she was, uh, I think, 12 or thereabouts, uh, just before, um, you know, it all ended, uh, he had a couple of cousins. She had a couple of cousins that Donnie asked to go on motorcycle ride. And she stepped in on, on an occasion and took that motorcycle ride where he, uh, molested her there as well. So the motorcycle that he's referring to, uh, he's correct. It did happen. And uh, Jeannie has laid that out. Okay? And 
show. It looks like, give me a thumbs up if you guys are good to go, and we'll finish the last 10 minutes here, uh, and then we'll go from there, okay? So let me see some thumbs so I know you guys are okay, and we're good. Okay, it is hard to listen to. Yeah, it's it's extremely hard, um, but we're going to talk. Okay, we're good. Okay, Dale, go ahead. Uh, let's listen, and I won't interrupt again. Let's listen to the last 10 minutes. Uh, and all I know is whoever she got for her little friend to testify or these eight other women are all lying. You know, I asked her, her I said, she, you know, because I asked her about that, about her friend. And she's like, well, she, she came over and she spent the night that night. And she said she slept on the top bunk or something. And um, she said that you... I guess she came in the room and started messing with her, and Jeannie said she she kicked you so hard that you you were really hurt or something. And then she said that the next morning. Okay, I'm coming up. I I say that's all bullshit, Mary. Yeah, she's just trying to get people to, and why she hates me so bad and stuff. I don't know. But I guess she don't care about nobody but herself and wants my kids to foster care. Mm-hmm. And I'm fine. Yeah. You know what? I'll tell the whole story. Yeah. I got stories to tell, too. Yeah. Fine. Right. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to let you know what was going on. So, and... All right. Well, and she also, called along me. Also, she told me that... Um, when she goes in there to make her report, she's going to tell them a about what happened with us too. So when with Chris, yeah, of course, of Chris course, Mitch oh, Chris Mitch and stuff. So that's gonna be Chris reported Mc, too. Chris so. McDumbass. No, McDumbass. No, not Chris. No, no. I said she's gonna tell him. Chris is calling her. I said she was gonna tell them about me and you and Chris and Mitch Farias. When that happened, oh, uh, when they attacked me, oh, when I when I saved, when yeah, they they meant to probably rape you or something. Well, but I, I saved yeah, you, I was but, scared for you my know, you life. Go ahead and tell them that. Yeah, and I stopped them, but you go ahead and tell them that. Uh, well, yeah, I, I stopped all that, but I don't, you know, uh, you probably don't remember you. that part. I I don't yeah, know. Okay. Yeah, I got a good thing, and you. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. I, just, I, I just do you know, Mary. Well, I just I'm glad I was there, you know, but Donnie, I'm getting the blame for it. Right. Yeah, I was there. I remember. So, you know, you're going to turn into a bad thing because I saved you. I thought it was kind of like a game or whatever, you know, but then I see it start getting serious. And I pulled him off and made him stop. Right. Well, if okay, I, that if tells I you what kind of person uh, I am. I'm just saying if I hadn't no, mustered up the strength to get up off the damn floor because they were holding me down, I... And I ran into mom and dad's bedroom, and then they they left. They took off. They were gone. You know. And then when Randy came home with Rouse, you sure I was there? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you guys were getting drunk and getting high, and yeah, so were you, Mary. Well, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I I don't deny it at all. Man, this is old bullshit, man. It, Y'all need it, is, to stop. it is old, Donnie. It's very old. From way and back then. It's really when. getting real old. Yeah. Y'all crying and shit over nothing, man. I saved your ass, you know, and you're making a big, y'all making big deals about this crap. Well, I'm trying not to that. make a big deal out of it, Donnie. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to make a big deal out of it. I, you know, I just want to call you. Man, this is supposed to be about my daughter. And that's it. You know, 40, something over 40 years ago, and then she's saying, you know, know, this man hell with her. Well, I just, I wanted to let you know, you know, what she was telling me. Oh, yeah, no, well, tell her good luck, man. I've I've got some stuff that's going to be said about her, too. That's all right. Right. Well, she wants to go on live TV ruin me, ruin my name, take my freaking job, ruin my damn life, everything else, tell her good luck, man, because, you know, I got people on my side, too. Right. I know. the only one. I know, Donnie. I know, Donnie. I know. I know. I just, 
I just wanted to call you and let you know, okay? And when I tell the judge that she initiated it all, I don't know where she learned it from or what. Yeah, I should have been smart enough to say no, but I was a kid too. Right. Yeah. Yep. You know no better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So well, what does that mean? That. I understand that, you know, but well, she was a kid too, Donnie, you know, so yep, I Yeah, yeah, and she should yeah. leave it there. That's what she should do is leave it there. Stop all this crap, man. Yeah. I need to be looking for my daughter, man. Nobody's out here helping us. I got my private, we got people here to help me search. I got two people here to help me search. Uh-huh. That's all we fucking got. Yeah. Why don't she come out here, get off her fat fucking ass, and come out here and help us search instead of sitting there causing us problems? Yeah. Tell well, that bitch, I don't know. Maybe she will. Bitch, I don't know. Tell that fucking bitch to come out here and help us search instead of running her big, big fat fucking mouth. Right. Trish and her. Yeah. And causing problems. Tell her to come out here. She loves Summer so bad and thinks about her so bad. And all that bullshit. Tell her to get her off her fat ass and come out here and help us search. Yeah, I she really tell fucking her. give a fuck about anything. Mm-hmm. And if she cared about Summer, she'd care about her dad. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. Yeah. Because Summer loves me, man. Yeah. Y'all don't fucking understand. Everybody thinks they, oh, poor Summer, poor Summer. Well, Summer loves her fucking daddy. <laughs> Well, I, I know. I, I'm, I'm sure she does. I'm sure she does, Donnie. Well, I know she fucking you know, does. Yeah, I'm sure she does, Donnie. I, I know she I'm, does. You know, I'm not she saying that. She don't give a fuck about all you motherfuckers, Jeannie and all them fucking bitches. Yeah. Fuck her, man. Let her go press her fucking charges, whatever. I was a fucking teenager. I was underage. She's full of shit. Yeah. Tell her I said so. I I will. I'll tell her, Donnie. I I wish she would just call you and talk to you, but you know that's not. Good. I wish she would too, but she's not a real woman. She ain't got the nuts. Oh. She can't do that. She's underhanded. Yeah. She's a fucking snake in the grass. She's a fucking evil fucking bitch. And tell her I said that too. I, I, if she cared about I, summer I at all, she would stop this shit. Yeah. Because Summer loves her fucking daddy. Well, well, I'm maybe, I don't know. I'm guessing maybe that's why she is doing that. I don't know. She don't give a fuck about Summer or she wouldn't be doing this to her dad. Yeah. Well, I never thought of it that way. She's been spreading these lies about me my whole life. She's made me pay 10,000 times throughout my whole fucking life. Made people hate me called the law on me, called my parole officers on me, called everybody on me constantly. She's been making me pay my whole fucking life. Yeah, and I, still, because she's evil. Yeah, I didn't hear about that, about her. I know her she has. Life. I've had people tell me, I've had my PO tell me she's called them on me millions of times. Oh, really? For nothing. She called huh. the welfare on me every time I was ever in Utah. Called the welfare on me constantly. Yeah. Huh. I, I don't when know. When I had Donnie that. and Margie, I could never mm-hmm. I could never even make it there. Right. I never could make it because of her. Uh-huh. Huh. Because she's got an evil heart. Right. Yeah. I, and all I mean, she cares about is she wants her my dad and her mom to herself or she don't want me in the picture. And that's what it's really all about. She's well, trying to set me up for bullshit, and it's all lies. Well, just for your information, Dad don't want her over there anymore. She hasn't, she hasn't gone. Do you blame him? Do you blame him? For a long time. She told me, Dad told me that he she, she tried to sleep with her. Him. Oh. I mean, he was just smart enough to walk away from the dumb bitch. Huh. And you don't think that he said that because of his Alzheimer's? No, I got it on recording. He he told me the whole thing. I know it's true. Right. He's he's been telling me that. Right. Uh, It's just the only thing his dad was smart enough to walk away from. uh, And I've had all kinds of girls walk up to me like that and stuff. But you know what? I'm smart enough to walk away now because of fucking Jeannie and her bullshit. Huh, yeah. The girls do that shit. They do, man. Right. But are you smart enough to walk away? That's the question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, Donald. Just tell her. Just tell her I said go to hell, man. Okay. I'll see your ass in court. All right. I'll... Well, he hung up on her, and uh, so here's an interesting tidbit. Uh, this call was done uh, before they pranked Mary last night. Uh, so now I think you understand the motive of why uh, Mary, part of why she got um, thrown under the bus last night by some folks um, and Don and Candace and others you know the the perpetrator who victimizes children uh, learns this behavior through a process of you know other men and it's interesting that he threw his father under the bus by alleging that this five-year-old somehow uh, hit on his biological dad and, you know, he turned her away. Now, I'm not saying he is a 290, as we used to call him, okay? but I know his stepdad uh, was very abusive and was also engaged in abusing uh, some of the women in the family. So that's probably where Donnie picked it up. Okay. And so Donnie's experimentation through fantasy uh, acted itself out quite efficiently for seven years on poor Jeannie. And what was interesting is when he was 12, when it started, and the baby was five, the following year, at when he's like 13, and Mary is 13, he attacked her with two of his friends. So what he did was his behavior ratcheted to the next fantasy okay. and you'll notice through this whole conversation and many others by the way okay, that not one time did he say you know i'm sorry i should have known etc cetera, etc cetera. no he admits that he was a teenager he admits that, yeah, he should have known while a teenager, okay? but the drive to, you know, assault and abuse was just too much for him. And to the, and I'm going to submit to you, it still is. Okay? These guys don't, you know, these guys don't lose their spots. They they adapt and improvise in relationship to their environment i.e. they become religious um they i mean just look at dennis Rader. Okay, he was a deacon in his church but for over 30 years you know he was also btk in the secret life okay. uh, and the fact that when genie came uh, to the forefront because let's always remember let's always remember that um, this drive uh, of this problem has to be fed. Okay? In today's world, with the advent of inappropriate material on the internet, it gives these guys a lot of fuel. Okay? Um, and if you ever see Dr. Dobson's interview with Ted, okay, he blamed that fuel for his initial, um, you know, assaults. And, and, and he was careful to say, well, I'm not blaming all of it. Okay. 
because at some point they cross a line and at some point they become, uh, you know, just driven by this problem. And Don's no exception to that in, in my opinion. Okay. And what's fascinating here and what is needs to be pointed out and remembered uh, very succinctly that Jeannie came forward after learning the next day that Summer disappeared. Now, the only thing she could reflect on, and we talked about this, I talked to her about this, the only thing she could reflect on was her experience at five with Don Welsh, her stepbrother, through marriage, right? Her mom, her biological mom, married his biological father. Okay. And as a result of that, okay, she thought, oh my gosh, what is going on here? And so she picked up the phone and called TBI. Okay. She felt it was relevant to Summer's disappearance. This is very relevant to Summer's disappearance because, you know, there's a possession going on here with this guy. Uh, you know, he talks about doing, you know, he talks about he's religious, okay? yet this is what's happening behind the scenes. He talks that, uh, um, you know, all the other things, um, you know, she never, she never looked back when Donnie, you know, was out of the picture. And when she left home, she was done. And she's, she's held this information internally in this pain for, you know, 37 years. And she never looked back. She was, you know, trying to get on with her life. She's raised successful children, uh, Trish being one of them. Um, and then all of a sudden, Summer disappears. And boom. She immediately calls TBI. And because she was afraid for summer. She was afraid for summer. Okay. And, you know, that's, that's just brave for a, a woman, you know, 37 years later comes back into the spotlight in this internet age and says, look, I need to tell you what's, what happened here when I was started, when it started, when I was five. So what she was, what she did was she gave a new angle for investigators to look at that this sweet baby has just vanished. And, oh, by the way, did we tell you okay, that this guy, daddy, okay, uh, has been abusing kids, and we have evidence of that, that 37 years ago it potentially began. Um, that's relevant to Summer. That's very relevant to Summer. And uh, I hope people, I hope you see that. Okay. Because that could be a pattern that these brave women, survivors, have just broken. And as a result of that, now they're facing their accusers okay? and they're coming around 
and saying, and now, by the way, a total of six now, right, that we know of, that we know of, okay, are coming around okay, and saying, okay, hey, it, this happened to me too. Okay. I think one of the most, you know, other horrendous stories of in this situation is that sweet little girl that was spending the night with her girlfriend, Jeannie's girlfriend. And, you know, Jeannie went, used to go, uh, would put multiple layers of, of uh, garments on when she would go to bed. Okay. And when you hear a guy like this say that a five-year-old hit on his father, are you serious? Okay. By the way, a father who has dementia right now, okay, and if Don, you know, has that call, you know, that just goes to show you how even cal more calculating he is to try to control the narrative about Jeannie and Mary. You see, last night was about controlling the narrative okay, in relationship to discrediting them. Because, you know, that phone call that was made to Mary did a couple of things. Number one, it scared the heck out of her. Okay? Because if, if, if you haven't heard it, go over uh, and listen to it at, uh, you know, some Unmasked. And I think Tiffany has it up and others. Go listen to the call. Okay? Uh, I have the call. Okay? I I. I, I listened to it to pull out some things on it internally for me. Okay. And I told Mary when she called me and played it for me, and, and she called me, you know, around 1 o'clock in the morning uh, when that call went down. And I told her, I said, put your seatbelt on. This is a play. Okay. And so I put on my community page, that it's going to be an interesting day for Summer Welsh. Because, see, everybody who's saying, what does this have to do with Summer? Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. What did that call have to do with Summer? It has everything to do with folks trying to cover their tracks, in my opinion. Okay. That's exactly what it has to do with Summer. I'm trying to help find Summer. I've said it from the beginning, and I will continue to say it. Okay. And by exposing this stuff behind the scenes, okay, actually sheds light on summer. Okay. Because the relevance of the behavior in the secret life reflects the public persona. Okay. You cannot have both of those personas okay, looking for summer. One says they're looking for summer, and then the other says completely opposite of that. So by exposing himself, and Don's doing this, by the way, he didn't call me, he called his stepsister to unload on her about the assault on his other sister. So he utilized triangulation. Classic. Classic triangulation. Okay? And ask any psychologist, any, any you know, therapist, they will explain triangulation to you very clearly. You know, you've got this guy who tells this guy, and then this guy tells the victim, then the victim is controlled by the narrative that sh they give back, and then that person gives back to the suspect. Okay? At all times, the narrative is being controlled by that guy. Okay? And 99% of these incidents are men. They're not women. I mean, there's a small percentage. But most of them, 99%, are men. Okay. So this is classic. He didn't call me. Okay. They didn't call me 
with the prank phone call. Next time, call, try to call me. Okay. See if I play. Okay. Uh, not interested. Okay. I am interested like Mary, like Jeannie, like Trisha, and like 16,000 other people listening right now in chat alone. We are interested in finding summer. Okay. In finding summer. Okay. A five year old does not get to choose to be a victim. The last time I checked, summer's mentality in development was chase on the case and Paw Patrol. Okay. Well, you know, I have a real problem when a man 37 years later says, well, she put her hand in an inappropriate place on my body and she instigated it. Well, I, here, here's a call coming in. Okay. Uh, no. No. She did not instigate it. Okay. Didn't happen that way. And I, based on what you said, I'm sure you're going to tell the judge. Okay. <clears throat> good luck with that. Seriously, good luck with that. So let's see a hashtag for Jeannie Strong and Mary Strong and Trisha Strong. And let's show some love uh, to these survivors and let them know that the world stands with them. Um, let them see in this chat that a five-year-old does not get to instigate sexual deviant behavior. Okay. It, it's just crazy. To, uh, to even hear that, it just, it absolutely makes no sense for a father of a missing five-year-old to say that a five-year-old, hey, come on, please, we're better than that. Hey. I pray tonight that this little girl is not in the hands of somebody who thinks a five-year-old instigates everything. I pray that that's not the case, Don. You somehow have projected that she's in a dungeon somewhere. You have projected that maybe, you know, she's being essayed in the most violent way, by the way. Those were, I'm not going to even use the word because I know what it looks like because I've talked to many victims and survivors okay, about guys like you. Okay. So the fact that last night really showed the other side of what's going on here Friends, you know, it's it, this, we need to collectively support law enforcement, uh, you know, Sheriff Lawson, who, by the way, you know, let's continue to, to repeat, everything is still on the table and everybody is still a person of interest. Everything is still on the table. And everybody is still a person of interest. I love that guy. <laughs> hey. I know that t the TBI, Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, I know that the FBI, and I know that thousands of agencies or of agencies around the country through an Amber Alert, through NCIC, National Crime Information Center, okay, many folks on YouTube, many channels on YouTube, irrelevant of whether they're in the true crime community or not. Many news stations around the world 
are looking for summer Welsh, okay, are out there looking and diligently helping to find summer Welsh. Some as simple as a podcast on YouTube. Some as dynamic as the equestrian search people who came out there and volunteered their time to look for her. Some as simple as a neighbor putting a heart on YouTube in a chat channel. And prayer hands okay, about that. Okay. Now, I'm going to let everybody know, I have other calls where they called me and they were wasted. Okay. And one of them, you know, I'm not going to play, you know, I'm being honest with you, I'm just not going to play it because uh, it doesn't need to be played now. Okay. But where they cuss me out, up one side, down the other, both him and Candace, okay. and, you know, oh well, okay. what does that have to do with summer? What does that have to do with this platform talking about summer. Okay. Well, it has the fact that this platform can reach tens of thousands of people on a Sunday night for an hour to an hour and a half and keep her name out front, okay. unlike others. Okay. That has everything to do with summer, finding her, helping to find her. Okay. Because I'm not thinking that she's in a dungeon somewhere or that the worst things are happening to her. Okay. I'm hoping that investigators get credible information and that they're able to sort through that data and that information. And you get that one phone call. You know how, if you haven't seen the interview I did with Brandon Wilson, who was a real serial child killer, by the way, not a fake, hey, go see the video. It's, it's on my channel. Hey. You know how we caught that guy? One phone call. One. If you have information about what the circumstances in totality are and it's credible, don't call me. Don't call any other YouTube channel. Call the TBI. Okay. Call the FBI. Call Sheriff Lawson and his team. Give them the information. What you might know about summer and about the circumstances around her okay do that this little five-year-old is out there somewhere okay. now let's you know kind of wrap our mind around that okay and at the same time if you also know other information about things like we just heard, okay, call TBI. Call the Sheriff's Department. Call the FBI okay, about Summer. If it has relevance to the case, make it credible information and give it to this phone number. Right there. That's going across the screen. Pick up the phone. It's Sunday evening. This has to stop with this stuff. Okay. You know, you've got people who are, you know, just going off the rails on, you know, accusing things and this and that. Okay. You know, I don't get that. I don't understand that. Whatever happened to the idea of humanity? Okay. Whatever happened to the idea 
that a five-year-old okay, is missing and that all information in all of the dynamics, family, friends, work, relatives, the neighbors, the supermarket, folks, everything is relevant when a five-year-old goes missing. I mean, I think, you know, when Tim Coop, the director, you know, the captain in the search and rescue up there, I, I think initially there were, you know, a hundred and something agencies that sent resources through mutual aid, search and rescue. I mean, if you, if we go back and look at some of those early, uh, you know, press conferences, okay, they were exhausted. I mean, physically exhausted day to day, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, they were exhausted. But today, they still, it's Thursday, I'm sorry, I thought I was, you're right. And I don't have dementia, by the way. <laughs> it is Thursday. All the days are running when you're, you know, running out here. Um, thank you for correcting me. Uh, I apologize for that. Uh, I've even said, a, you know, a couple of alphabet letters wrong, and, you know, people are upset about that too, right? You know, it's A-D, okay? Does that help? <laughs> you know, move on. Let's move on, shall we? And find summer. Okay. And then look at the other side of this thing, where this thing has just exploded on a on a national, international level. Okay. Let's bring summer home, shall we? Please, let's bring summer home. Okay. On Sunday night, um, we're going to mix it up a little bit. We're going to talk about some of the other cases uh, do some Q and a, okay. And, um, hopefully within the next 24, 48 hours, hey, uh, we'll have some information that potentially, uh, could change the dynamics, uh, of this whole scenario here. Um, Jeannie sent me a text said, thank you. She hasn't looked back. Okay. Give, show her some some love here. Everybody is 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 cheering you on, Jeannie, Mary, Trish, and and you know, thank goodness for Trish going on unmasked and and laying it out there. Okay. I mean, that took a lot of courage to do that. There's a thirty thousand dollar reward somebody's putting up here for her. Call that number. Whoever needs that. Go collect it. Okay. Go collect it. But bring credible information to TBI. Stay strong. Uh, all of you know our friends out there, all of the friends that are working on Summer's case, you know, you guys and gals in TBI, at the FBI, in the Sheriff's Department, stay strong. I know you are. But stay strong and keep pressing forward. Okay? Don't look behind you. Okay? And as the old saying goes again, when there's another circus that comes in town, okay, maybe they have more clowns. Okay? And I know I mentioned that in the beginning. Okay? And by the way, um, you know, I have I have much an immense respect for the folks that are doing what they're doing out there and for that and for the community of Kingsport and for just the good people in the state of Tennessee, salt of the earth. Uh, there's one guy, uh, who's out there, uh, Don, uh, you know who you are. Okay. Stay the course, my friend. Okay. People hear you. Okay. And they're, uh, not DW. The other one, okay. stay the course. Okay. The good people of Tennessee are behind this little girl. And at some point, there will be a resolution. I'm praying it's a, resolu a, a, a resolution that we all look at each other and go, okay, time to go. Okay. But there will be a resolution. I can assure you, whether it's plus or a minus, and the, and the minus are always the worst one. 
Okay? They're always the worst ones. <clears throat> but remember, Don is more focused on himself and using the excuse that it's unfocusing him and the world on summer. That's not what's happening. It's actually the other way around. The fact that what you were responsible for and what you have clearly said you did, okay, that has uh, fogged the mirror in the search for summer. Because now the question is, is it relevant? Okay. So with that, let's continue to be good to each other. Let's continue uh, to be classy. Uh, and I want to thank each and every one of our subs, our members, our mods, Miss Sophia, Maui Girl, Mimi J2, uh, JT, Four Sons Mom. We're grateful for each of you. Okay. And with that, let's go to Hawaii. Dylan, are you ready to take us to Hawaii? Let's go. We'll see you soon. Hard working every day. I'm stressed out. 24-7, babe. 